It's the Hook Cam back with another film breakdown. Uh, Bears fans, this time it's going to be uh, a little focused on Chicago's offense. Um, I think we all know what their defense is capable of. Um, that pass rush is, is insane. That linebacking core is next level. That's going to take care of itself. But in this video, I want to take a look at offensively kind of what went wrong. Um, where 10 made good throws, where 10 made mistakes, and just overall what I liked out of Matt Nagy, who is one of my favorite up-and-coming coaches uh, in the NFL. So um, I, I know it's going to be tough a little bit. A little bit of these uh, plays are going to sting, and I understand that because it's, it's always tough to see your team lose. But again, I'm just trying to go over schematically what went wrong and uh, what could help uh, in the long run. Uh, maybe a couple of things that I would have done differently. So anyway, breaking this thing down to start third down and nine uh, for Trubisky and the boys. Um, so what's happening defensively on this is the Packers are just trying to create confusion up front, right? So we have essentially three backers who are standing up in between both guards, okay? And all you're trying to do on this is confuse the quarterback, right? Essentially two out of three, three of these guys are probably dropping because you're not going to like concentrate three defensive players in between two gaps that just doesn't make sense so you kind of know off the bat all right two of these guys are probably coming one of them's going to drop um but again you're just trying to create that confusion your secondary kind of gives it away a little bit that it's going to be man that's what you're thinking initially as a quarterback but as they drop here they kind of drop into a fire zone and uh it's uh, the other part of the problem with this is that blitz lands so quickly and the reason why it lands so quickly is because the offensive line is running a hinge protection now with hinge protection um you delegate okay this is going to be the the slide side and this is going to be the man side so all that happens with uh, hinge protection is that in this situation from the left side from the center to the left side of the line right center left guard left tackle are all slide protecting to the left which all that means is that they're responsible from their left hip to that next offensive lineman's right hip right now this guard's responsible from his left hip to the tackle's right hip and that tackle is responsible for anything outside here on the back side of hinge protection, you have man protection, okay? So this guard is essentially going to be locked on with that end, and this tackle is going to be locked on with that uh, rushing corner, okay? Now, off the bat, as an offensive lineman, as this right tackle, you're thinking, I don't know if he's coming. I don't know if he's dropping into coverage. We're not sure, but I do know he's essentially on the ball in a blitz position. So what should happen on this play is that the guard should take a step out um, to this defensive end, right and he because he's essentially going to be manned and this tackle needs to take a slight kick step backwards right slight kick step backwards which he kind of does he hesitates just a little bit because this guard is trying to get out and get out now okay um the tackle's eyes need to be on that corner and this guard needs to be trying to hunker down and take this defensive end but this tackle right if that corner drops great then i'm going to get hip to hip with this guard and we're going to seal this edge right if that corner comes then i gotta peel off and take him. now the back on hinge protection is the key because the back is supposed to step up and take 50 on this, right? Because essentially you're splitting your offensive line from the center to the left to slide protecting, like we said before. On the right side, we've got two man protection blocks, which is going to widen the interior of the line. And this back is supposed to step up and take this backer right here, right? Now, technically with hinge, she's supposed to read from one to two, whichever one they label as two. It could be this cat, could be this cat. Right, but he's supposed to read from one to two. Well, guess what? One's on the ball in that A gap. So as a back, I gotta know. You can see his eyes looking actually on this, and he steps out to that cornerback where he sh where he shouldn't be. Right, his eyes should be up front in that A gap, and he should be taking over this blitz on this. Right, you can see his eyes peek there. He's got to step up and take 50. Offensive lines confused as they should be because his protection fell apart. But essentially, I, again, and I don't know, I'm not in the Bears organization, but I have been around football long enough to know this is hinge protection and the back should insert a gap on this. So this sack, as much as people want to blame Mitchie for not getting this ball out, not the case. That back's got to step up, has to take that a gap. All right, fellas, next play I'm going to break down for you here. Uh, third down and five, kind of breaking into that red zone area for the Bears. Um, what Chicago is going to do on this, and I absolutely love this play design, is they're motioning their back out of the backfield, okay? With number one and number two over here, uh, number two is going to run a crosser to this side of the field. Number one is essentially going to run a vertical. 
Now, with their new number three, right, he's going to run a wheel on this and, again, just kind of influence that vertical game. And then we're going to run our back also to the flat. And this is a, a very Kansas City play call, okay? Matt Nagy is a Kansas City guy. I should say it's a very Andy Reid play call because he's from that coaching tree. Um, but, again, we're influencing this side of the field, right? And really what we're doing is we're clearing out space for 29. And that's kind of my biggest problem with this play for 10 is that he's got to hit 29 right now. He's got to hit Tariq Cohen right off the bat, right? You're influencing that side of the field. You're getting these DBs are already at seven, eight yards, right? These guys are backing up because they're getting vertical routes. We're influencing with the wheel. Hit 29 right now. Let him get upfield and get you that first down. Uh, th there seemed to be on Thursday a little bit of a strange uh, hesitation with, with Trubisky. And I think that it was a combination of a, a confusing Packers front, probably some confusing coverages, um, and that caused him to be a little bit more cautious when he was throwing this football. But he's got to trust his coaching, he's got to trust his checkdowns, and he's got to understand, like, you got athletes on the field everywhere, right? You hit 29 right now on this, he could easily take this thing to the five and into the end zone, right? He's just got to trust him, hit that check down, and go. And again, guys, this is all coachable things and i can guarantee you this is all stuff that nagy's telling him this isn't new for him he had a bad game on thursday night and that's something that everybody wants to overreact with right oh trubisky can't get it no 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 he had a bad game right every quarterback has bad games he's a bad game on thursday night football it happened to be opening night it, all of that right but it, he's gonna be fine this is all very coachable very fixable things and it's all stuff that i kind of want to open up to the chicago bears fans that's all all right, fellas, another play here that I want to break down for you guys. Second down and four. Uh, and like I said in the last play, Matt Nagy coming from that Andy Reid coaching tree. This play is all all Andy Reid. And I, I love everything about it, just like the last one, right? Your RPO, it's a big-time RPO, right? So what you're doing with your offensive line is you're running wide zone, okay? And they block this up really, really well. Great job by your left tackle here, working and pushing that defender outside, right? And wide zone's really tough to block for offensive linemen because there's a gray area with it, right? You're either going to try and get to this cat's outside shoulder and pin him in to create that edge, or he's going to run upfield and you got to push this cat to the sideline. And it sounds simple when you break it down, but when you're actually doing it, it's very, very difficult, right? Right in this situation, he's got his helmet on that backside shoulder, right? That should tell him, great, I got to push this cat to the sideline. And he does a good job of letting that defender kind of take himself there, right? And every defense, and this is something that I don't think a lot of fans understand, every defense has to be gap sound. Okay, so this defender right here is your edge defender. His job is to not let anything get outside of him. Now your left tackle knows that. So he works to that play side, that inside shoulder, excuse me. He sees that guy try to fight back inside, but he knows, hey, he's going to have to, he has to pop back outside, does a great job running his feet. Um, he could be a little bit more physical and pushing that guy to the sidelines, absolutely, but the block is effective, okay? Now, uh, Trubisky on this one, I, I kind of believe it was a designed handoff. Um, actually, you know what? No, looking at that, I do think this was a, a good read on him. So Trubisky, 10 is reading this cat right here. Okay, now watch how he comes upfield and kind of chops his feet. He's reading, great call, call by 10, right? Give that ball off, live to fight another down, right? But what I like about what the Bears are doing with this is the fact that the Packers came out on, on running downs and they lined up in this kind of heavy up front defense. And all this defense is, is, is a bear front, okay? You got your nose tackle head up on the center, right? You have your, uh, your uh, three tech, excuse me, your defensive tackle who's lined up on the outside shoulder of the guard in a three tech. Um, now with the bear front, it can be anywhere from a three technique to a four eye. And a four eye is, all that is, is on the inside shoulder of the tackle. But it looks like to both of these cats are lined up in three techs. Um, now what the bears are doing in this and something that I wish they would have done more is they're really stressing this defense, right? They got, they line up with two technical backs in the backfield. I know he's a tight end and then they motion him out of the box, right? That has to bring somebody else out with them. Um, leaving just one backer in the box and opening up some stuff for your running game, which is exactly what they hammer here with this wide zone. Um, all around a good play call, really good job by this offensive line working up field. This is a good job, man. You got movement three, four yards up field. Let your back take care of the rest. Um, and he ends up picking up a first down on that. All right, fellas, next play here. This, I think, might be Ten's best throw of the night. It's also one of his best reads of the night. Um, what they do here on this is they, they line up with essentially quads to this side, uh, but you stack all three of your receivers. Again, it's it's very Andy Reid-esque, and I, I absolutely love it. So what they do with these three receivers is they're going to run a drag across the field here. You're going to run a curl with number two, and then you're going to run a, a, an arrow with number three. 
okay and what that does is it, it gives you a cover two and a cover three beater off the bat right if it's cover three this corner is going to bail and you're going to hit 29 coming out to the flat right essentially you're going to read him and if he stays in with the with the curl from number two then you hit the flat or if he runs with uh, the drag then you can hit the curl right it's it's something like that if he also if he runs with the arrow then you can hit the curl as well you kind of get what i'm saying right pick and choose your battles but what i like about this is that the packers are essentially running just cover one right and what you do with cover one like that and when you're a quarterback if you have cover one and you trust your receivers right you can throw these balls uh, outside of the numbers which is where chicago was winning some of their battles on thursday night and i'm kind of surprised that they didn't go back to it is that they were winning those routes that were in between the numbers and the sidelines. And I'm kind of surprised that they didn't go back to it, right? Something that I think that they'll look at on film and kick themselves later because it was there. Their receivers were, I, I think, more athletic than their DBs, right? They're making plays like this. There were two, three, uh, three or four balls, actually, that were caught on the sidelines. Two, one of them didn't count. I know that. That was down by the uh, red zone. I believe it was 18 who made the catch. But this is an outstanding ball from 10, right? He, high, he throws it a back shoulder a high back shoulder only the spot that uh 12 can go get it really really good ball from mitch really really good read from from uh, him as well right and these are those things that are positive that you have to build on and again i think there's a little bit of an alarmist mentality with 10 right now he's going to be fine matt nagy's going to fix him up they'll be good to go but again this is just that one of the highlights of the night for him um great ball great read and uh picking up a big first down here early in the second all right, fellas, next play here from Chicago. Um, you, you know, I don't want to hang on the bad things that happened on Thursday, right? Because ESPN and the media, everybody's going to be talking enough about that, right? We all know that it was a sloppy football game. We all know that they mismanaged their play clocks with delay games and holdings. We, we know all about that. What I want to hit on is some of the play calls that I really liked and some of the stuff that you could see in the future, okay? So this play, again, um, love it love the design love everything about it so you've got from a defensive perspective you have three receivers to the right side of the field okay um you've got another one in motion who's going to make this a very unbalanced formation for the defense especially on top of that you're running this to the boundary now really quickly for those of you who don't know the boundary is the short side of the field so the ball's on the left hash this left side of the field that's the boundary this right side of the field that is called the field so you have boundary and field so now you're you're overloading this boundary right which is forcing the defense to commit a lot of guys to a short amount of space now what you're going to get out of the bears in this you're going to get a vertical from number one you're going to get a crosser from number two and then you're going to get a wheel from number three but the key to this play is this motion right here because this motion is going to bring uh you're going to bring quarter patterson over into the flat and that's going to attract this cat right here who's a who's supposed to be watching where the back goes, okay? But he runs up field, he goes up into the bat, or excuse me, into the flat, he's gonna be that flat defender, which leaves this linebacker now, number 50, on your running back, which is a mismatch for Chicago, right? Like Once again, you influence into the flat, that's gonna keep this defensive back here. You've got your crosser with number two, you've got your vertical with number three, you leak your back out on this wheel who turns that corner, gets up field, Great catch. Could have been a little bit of a better ball from 10, but hey, it got there. You pick up your first down. But again, guys, it's it's the creative play calls like this that I think you, you're you going to see more of out of Chicago. I think it got a little too vanilla on Thursday. Um, you know, again, I, Packers were throwing a lot of stuff at him. They were throwing a lot of different defensive looks at him, um, and I think maybe that caused uh, the play callers to be a little bit more tight to the chest with their with what they were calling. But again, I think that when these two teams play again in December, it's going to be a completely different ball game. You have to get those first game jitters out of the way. You have to get all that stuff off the table. You know, happy that you, this game happened early, right? Rather lose a game early than lose a game late. All right, fellas, uh, second and long is, is definitely not the position you want to be in as an offensive coordinator, right? You, you've got really one more down to work with. You look for something easy in your playbook that you trust your quarterback can make a throw on, or you know maybe you've schemed them up on a second and run defense for, for a run play that you like. Um, with this play right here, a uh, really, really easy throw for 10, and that's what I like so much about this play, okay? Um, Starting off, you motion your receiver from uh, from right to left. That's just going to bump over a defensive back and kind of show you their hand at what they're running, right? So since 23 is over the top here and he motioned with them, um, 
how this play is going to shake out is you know it's man, right? So what's going to happen with number one over here, he's going to run a drag. He's your primary guy on this if they're running man. Number two is going to run almost like a, a, a flat to, to a wheel route. Oh, he ends up running a curl. Excuse me. So I'm like an idiot now. Um, he ends up running a, a curl on this. He just has an outside release. That's why I thought it was a wheel. Um, and then number one on this side, I believe, is just running a vertical. Okay. But again, it's, it, it's really easy because it's man in the center of this defense just clears out right and when it's man like this you're you're forcing defensive backs to run with receivers across the field and that's a matchup that you like as an offensive coordinator on top of this right you end up setting up a little bit of a pick play on this right so what happens here is with this drag right he's kind of told to run almost through this linebacker right and again it's not you can't just run up and actually block the guy but when you leak your back out on a wheel like you can here and you pick this linebacker that's when it opens up a ton of space now he's just running to the flat a wheel when you call a wheel like that it's usually a design play call and it's something that you call because you want your quarterback to hit on this one you just want him to run to the flat take care of any flat defenders keep them responsible which is exactly what happens here but again watch how this thing opens up in the middle wide open spot for a 10 to throw to easy ball easy completion easy first down you need to manipulate defenses and do more stuff like this um more often to keep keep the defense on their heels and to not let them just bring a bunch of blitz packages at you all right fellas second best throw of the night i think for trubisky on this so what's going to happen right is you you kind of squeeze everything together with this formation i believe it's 21 personnel and they got two tight ends at the actually no they're going unbalanced and they have a tackle down here they have a six offensive lineman and love this even more so what you're telling the defense on this right heavy personnel up front we want to run this rock we want to pound it first down and 10 early in the fourth let's get some dominance back in this game now what i like about this is you got your receiver up top who motions in a little bit what's that what that is doing is you're cutting your split because he's ultimately going to run a deep comeback on this so you cut your split down here so that you have more room to work with at the top of your route Okay, so watch how he cuts his split down to the top of the numbers a little bit inside. A quick run action from Trubisky. He rolls out to his right. And again, this is an outstanding ball. This is a great throw that can't be overshadowed. He's on the roll on the rollout, excuse me, rolling to his right, throws this thing to the play side, upfield shoulder to the sidelines, a spot only his receiver can get the ball. An outstanding throw from 10. And something that you have to highlight when you go and watch film with him the next day. Look at where this ball ends up, right? Right on his front side, play side shoulder. DB has no chance of getting that ball. Great play call with formationally. You're you're trying to, to mess with this defense, right? You're just telling them, hey, we're going to bring in a six offensive lineman. We're pounding this rock. Instead, you give a quick play fake. Have your quarterback, trust your quarterback to roll out and make this throw on the run, which he does exactly, right? Really, really good job on this play. Um, it's something that can't be overshadowed when we're, we're breaking down film on this game. All right, fellas, last play I want to break down for you guys here. Just kind of marrying up that RPO that we saw earlier, okay? We're going to get a wide zone to the right look from our offensive line. Uh, as we see here, they're just trying to push that thing upfield. Um, actually, check that. It's going to be an inside zone look. All right, fellas, last play here that I want to break down for you guys. Um, just kind of marrying up that RPO we saw from earlier. Only difference is our offensive line has given us an inside zone look. As you can see, they're much more physical, getting this ball upfield. Um, but again, what I like about this is that it's an easy read for 10, okay? And again, th this read is actually a little bit more complicated than it looks because ideally you read this cat, the end man on the line of scrimmage, right? But you get this pressure up front. Sometimes quarterbacks can freak out and kind of black out and just hand this thing off and live the fight again. But 10 keeps is cool, brings this thing back, hits Terry Cohen, who's got a ton of speed, um, and you get this cat the ball in open space. So, um, again, this is the screen portion of that, right? And you're blocking, you're trying to get to the outside shoulder of these defensive backs and really how these receivers block it it's actually kind of cool is they combo the first the first defensive back to show most dangerous man right they combo to him and what you need is this cat to work over to at least his midline for this receiver to work up to that next defensive back but you can see that you get pressure um, from that from the next guy over right that next defensive back cutting underneath it 12 does a good job peeling off 18 does just enough to get this block and you pick up the first down on it so again i love that play design a lot more like that to come i think from chicago and, and again fellas I, I know that i didn't show you guys all the bad things that happened and you're gonna see enough of that you're gonna see enough of that on nfl network and espn all that i'd rather show you guys some of the positive things that 10 did 
some of the positive schematic things that Matt Nagy did, Matt Nagy did, excuse me. And just remember, it's it's game one. You know, people love to overreact. People love to overshadow some of the good small details that players did, right? The Bears did a lot of good things, right? Okay, their defense played really, really well. Their offense, yeah, it, it struggled at times, absolutely, but they still did move the ball. So, again, I, I know that I didn't, you know, put Chicago on blast, but that's not the reason I'm making this video. I'm doing it to, to bring a little positivity to your day. So, again, guys, hope you enjoyed. I'm the Hook Cam. Um, if you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. And uh, that's all I got for today. I'll see you next time.